It is a dark time for the Manganels. The evil empire has replaced their inaccurate stormtroopers with dangerous crossbowmen, and is microing them to pursue the rebellious siege weapons across the map. The Manganels will need a secret weapon to even the odds. Last time, we learned that deleting a downhill Manganel removes the downhill damage reduction and lets it destroy an uphill Manganel. And the comments pointed out that that's not the only advantage to the delete trick. Oh no, we can also use it to increase our Manganel splash damage. But I've seen a couple of misconceptions about what this trick actually does, so let's clear them up and figure out how exactly the mechanic works. Then we'll have the edge we need to take the fight back to the crossbowmen. We'll use the scenario editor to show off some examples. Here I'll set it up so that every unit has 100 attack, and every crossbow has 200 HP and 0 armor. And I'll turn the HP bars to always on, so we can see how much damage each attack deals to multiple crossbows. We'll also set the blast radius of all attacks to 10, that way we have a larger area over which we can observe the damage. Now we can pair a living Manganel with a deleted Manganel. We can see from the HP bars that the deleted Manganel clearly does more damage. So, why does this occur? The first suggested explanation I encountered was that deleting the Manganel changes the way the rocks it fires do damage. The hypothesis is that when the Manganel is alive, only one of these rocks hurts the enemy units, but when it's deleted, then all six of these rocks do damage. Units have a minimum and maximum number of total projectiles, but the maximum is only used so that garrison buildings fire more projectiles. We can ignore that since nothing garrisons inside of a Manganel. Now, we'll have Manganels fire the minimum of 1, the standard 6, and the ludicrous number of 255 projectiles. First, we keep the Manganels alive, and they all do the same amount of damage. Now, we delete the Manganels, and, again, they all do the same amount of damage relative to each other. So, the number of projectiles doesn't actually matter here, and there's an explanation for why. Each unit can have primary and secondary projectiles, each of which the game represents also as a unit in the data files. The amount of damage dealt by the primary projectile is determined not by the projectile unit, but by the source unit, so the Manganel controls the amount of damage done by its primary projectile. The amount of damage dealt by the secondary projectile, however, is determined only by the projectile, and it is completely independent of the source unit. Thus, the Manganel does not control the damage of its secondary projectiles, but these all have zero damage anyway, thus whether or not the Manganel is alive or deleted has no effect on them. So the secondary projectiles are not our culprit here. Let's move on to the next suggestion, that instead of tapering off near the edges, the blast damage does full damage throughout the entire circle specified by the blast radius. This hypothesis is on the right track, but it's not quite exactly what happens. It does, though, lead us into a discussion of how the blast radius works. Blast radius behaves differently for units with projectiles than it does for units without projectiles. And there are lots of other special cases such as war elephants, cataphracts, and demolition ships, where there's hard-coded behavior for the blast radius to behave differently. But we'll focus right now just on the generic case of units that either have or don't have a projectile. As an example, we'll use a manganel as a unit with a projectile, and a modified paladin that has a blast radius of 10 as a unit without a projectile. The blast radius from a manganel decreases linearly from 100% of the manganel's damage at the center to zero at the edge of the blast radius. We see how the crossbow in the middle takes about 100 damage, and then if we look down an axis, every crossbow successively takes 10 less damage moving out towards the edge. Whereas for the paladin, every unit within the blast radius takes equal damage. With one attack on the center crossbow, all of the surrounding crossbows within the blast radius take the full 100 damage. Oh, and there's one more component that we should discuss, and that's a unit's accuracy. Accuracy is most notable with archers, where accuracy is the chance an archer has to hit a target that is standing still. But accuracy also plays a role in blast damage. Here's a trebuchet, which has 15% accuracy. I again gave it a blast radius of 10, and when it hits a unit, only a few units get damaged. This is because the accuracy determines the chance that a unit within the blast radius is damaged. Everything within a distance of 10 from the spot where the treb shot lands has a 15% chance to take blast damage. If we modify the trebuchet to give it 100% accuracy, then every unit within the blast radius has a 100% chance to take damage. 
and from the impact, we see the trebuchet has the same linear tapering for its blast damage as does the mangonel. Now, mangonels have 100% accuracy, so all units within their blast radius always take damage. But the hypothesis is that by deleting the mangonel, then instead of the linear taper, we would see a constant amount of damage just like is inflicted by our modified paladin. So let's test this out. We'll fire this mangonel and delete it, and... Well, now that's interesting. What we end up with is a combination of the two methods. There is a constant amount of damage dealt within half of the mangonel's blast radius, and then within the outer half of the blast radius, the damage tapers down linearly to the edge of the radius, and we see that successive crossbowmen now take 20 less damage for every tile away from the center they stand. For extra fun, we can take a 15% accuracy trebuchet, which typically would damage only a fraction of the units in its blast area, and delete it. The dead unit now has 100% accuracy by default, so now the shot has a 100% chance of damaging all units within the radius, and we observe the same behavior as with the mangonel. The inner half of the radius takes full damage, and then the damage tapers off linearly the outer half. To give a precise formula for the damage, let A denote the mangonel's attack, capital R denote the blast radius, and lowercase r denote the distance from the unit to the center of the attack's impact. The attack dealt to the unit is then equal to the entire attack A if the unit is within half of the overall blast radius. Otherwise, if the unit is in the outer half of the blast radius, the damage is calculated on the line passing through the points R over 2 A and R0, giving the formula 2A times 1 minus little r over big R. And finally, the unit takes 0 damage if it's outside the blast radius. Notably, deleting a mangonel does not increase the blast radius, only does more damage to units already inside of that radius. So there we have it, deleting mangonels makes them do 100% damage to the inner half of their blast radius, instead of tapering down from 100% starting directly at the center. Next time you're facing down an army of crossbows, consider whether it's a good idea to delete your mangonel. If the crossbows are closely bunched up and you can land a good shot, then it just might be worth it. Thank you all very much for watching, extra thanks to everyone supporting me on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.